Hello my quilting friends, Leah Day here with a new video for the machine quilting block party. Today I'm quilting block number two, the pointy eight Dresden plate, and we have so many beautiful designs to play with. We're going to do a little pebbling, a spiral swirl design, some more feathers, and we're going to tackle ruler foot quilting with some straight lines as well. So let's get started first quilting in the center with pebbling. To get started on our block, I have stitched in the ditch around the center circle and around the petal shapes, as well as the seam line between the block background and border. So I pulled up thread here and I'm just making my way around this center circle and I did mark this uh, just so that way I would have the line and be able to follow it easily. Another option, you could use a circle template and your uh, ruler foot to quilt around this as well. So there's lots of different options here. I am being careful to rotate around just so I can see and, and make that nice smooth circle. I, want it to, I don't want it to be wiggly wobbly. I really want it to be a nice smooth circular shape. So now I'm gonna fill this area with pebbling and I wanna keep these circular shapes nice and big. So I'm just gonna get started with maybe a quarter or half circle shape. And now I'm gonna stitch a small circle right here. And you can see just how much travel stitching is involved. I'll oftentimes swing around and travel back around one of my pebbles just to get a build up thread around them and make them stand out that much better. So here I'm swinging out with another one and then I think I'll form a nice big shape. If you want your quilt to remain very soft, then you'll want to try and stitch your circles as big as possible so that they basically leave the greatest amount of space open. The smaller your circles, the more they're gonna lock up the texture and the denser it's gonna become. Now, this is the center of a block and it's not really a big deal. If you wanted to quilt these real small and get real tiny, that'd be fine because this is only one small area of a quilt. It's not gonna be a big deal. So here I'm quilting some small half circle shapes just to get out of that area. It became a little tight. And now I'm gonna swing around and form a bigger, bigger circular shape. That looks nice. Another thing that you can do if you want to is you can build up thread here between the circles. I think this kind of looks cool. It really makes the circles stand out. It's a little bit of extra travel stitching, a little extra thread play but you can already see just how much drama that adds to the quilt block. I like it, I think it's cool, but it's not necessary. But you can see by doing it this way, I am also kind of traveling through my circular design and I'm getting back over to another area. So if ever you feel trapped in pebbling, if ever you feel like, oh, I, you know, I don't wanna be in this spot right now, you know, start travel stitching between the circles and filling in all of those little gaps, just like that, and you can work your way out of that area. No big deal. It's definitely allowed <laughs> to travel stitch. Might take a, an extra minute or two to fill in all of those little nooks and crannies, but I think it really adds a, a beautiful effect to the surface of the quilt. So now I'm swinging out with some bigger circular shapes, and when I'm guesstimating this, whenever I'm looking at it, I haven't marked this design because I can visualize it, but we do have this design marked within the pattern, so please use that if you need it. So basically what I'm visualizing here is the center of the circle, which would be you know kind of in the midpoint between two lines, and I'm visualizing the ring around it. And that's just something that the more you quilt it, the more you will be able to do that simply by guesstimating your space, by visually breaking the space up, not even needing the marks anymore. Uh, and it takes some time and maybe a few quilts, quilting them entirely with pebbling or just a whole lot of pebbling. And the more you do it, the better you'll get, I promise. So I've just got a few more little spaces here. And what's nice is that these spaces ended up kind of almost squarish in shape so I can easily tuck in here and fill them up with circles. I think I'm just gonna pop in here and fill this area with a half circle shape. So there we go. And I'm gonna take an extra minute to fill in all of these nooks and crannies with a little extra thread texture just to make it stand out that much better. 
So now it's time to quilt the petals of our Dresden plate. And we have two different designs, the spiral swirl design, and you can find a little template in your quilt pattern so that you can make the stencil and easily mark it on the surface of your quilt. We have another template that you can print onto freezer paper like this and stitch into place. And I'm just gonna stitch right over the paper. This is a real quick way of marking something that's complicated like this feather design. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna quilt over it and then tear the paper away in order to reveal our design. So to quilt this, I'm just working carefully up that center line. And then I'm gonna swing around that teardrop shape. And everybody quilts feathers a little differently. If it feels natural for you to go straight into the feather design, you can do that. Let me just show you what that's gonna look like. You're gonna swing out and around and then down and connect with that stem. And then backtrack along that line and swing out for your next feather. And I have to say, this is the direction that usually feels really unnatural for me, but I'm getting a lot of practice <laughs> quilting feathers with this uh, quilt along. And I'm finding that it's, a it's feeling a little easier these days, uh, especially having the marks. Having those lines is really essential if you're not used to quilting feathers or you're trying to quilt them in an odd direction, having marked lines there is really, really helpful. So I'm just traveling back carefully, swinging out, and then just trying to stay right on those lines as I stitch into that stem and then travel stitch back out again. I'm trying to stay right on the line just so that way it builds up thread nicely and it will kind of enhance the look of the feathers to have travel stitching between each one. It'll look real nice and it won't look messy. You know, that's the thing I'm trying to avoid. I don't really want a messy looking feather. As I work my way down, I'll be forming these shapes. They're gonna get a little smaller here. And our last one, you can see I kind of clipped it off just ever so slightly so that way I could see where I'd stitched before by stitching in the ditch. So I'm just gonna form this last shape, but it right up against the edge of that circle and then get back to stitching and then travel stitch over. And now we're gonna form the opposite side of the feathers the opposite direction. This time we're gonna be curling up and around. So this little feather shape, but I'm still doing the travel back action, which means I swirl out and around, I connect with the stem, I travel back along the back of the feather and swing out for the next one. Now, if you stitch off the lines, please don't worry about it because we're gonna rip this paper away so no one will know that you meant to stitch it differently, you know? So if you wanna swing out a little bit more and make your feather a little bit bigger, that's A-OK. -okay. Uh, you know, just keep it consistent. Remember what, you're, what, remember what you're doing. And then if you travel stitch along that line, make sure to stay right on the line of stitching. And that way it'll look nice and neat and it'll be a perfect feather every time. Now, to make the paper easier to tear away, it's really good to have extra travel stitching and a double layer of thread, also smaller stitches. You might notice that I'm stitching fairly small, which means that my hands are moving uh, very slowly in relation to the speed of my machine. This is just a hand movement thing. I do not have a stitch regulator. So I'm running the machine a little fast, moving my hands a little slow but I am gonna do an extra step, and that is I'm gonna stitch all the way around the feather one more time, just the outline, and that's gonna make the paper that much easier to tear away. It's also going to really make the feather stand out and look dramatic on the surface of the quilt. So here we go. I'm going to just stitch around that outer feather, and I'm just gonna bounce in that area where they come together, where the feathers stack on top of one another. So I'm just bouncing out, and quilting around and I have slowed down quite a lot because I'm wanting to stay right on top of that previous line of stitching. And this is just an extra step. You don't have to do it, certainly. You don't have to. I just think it makes it look really nice. So I'm gonna quilt along the outline of the feathers all the way around, then back down the center stem, then I'll travel stitch over and I'll meet you back here to show you how to stitch this swirl spiral. <laughs> So now I'm quilting down the stem of that feather and I have stitched this in the ditch with my walking foot. So it's already secure and now I just wanna stitch right on that line to work my way over to that spiral shape. Just careful stitching. 
And then now I'm just gonna swing out and around and quilt the spiral. It's very, very simple quilting. I do like this design to be symmetrical and to be exactly this shape within the petal. So that's why I marked it in each of the petals. If I wanted it to be more organic and freeform and you know, kind of different in each petal, petal, then I wouldn't have marked it. I would just be stitching it freehand. So remember that's always open to you. So now I'm swinging out and there are a lot of seam allowances here. Uh, there are probably three or four layers of fabric underneath these petals, especially when you get up in here uh, where we have that turned edge. So watch out for that. If you notice that something kind of feels weird as you're stitching that design, just slow down a little bit, bring your hands a little close to the needle so that way you maintain good control. So now it's time to quilt the background of the block with straight lines. And I've decided to do this with a ruler foot and template number one from the Dresden Plate template set. Now, if you don't have templates and you don't have a ruler foot, then you could always do this with your walking foot. Simply mark the lines in the background with a water-soluble blue pen or a ceramic marker, just whatever marking pencil you like, mark those lines and quilt on those lines with your walking foot. But I wanna show you ruler foot quilting because I think it's so cool and we don't have to mark it because the ruler foot does all the math for us. It does all the spacing. So here I am lining up the ruler with the edge of those Dresden plate petals. I am kind of pressing against that ruler foot. That's the best way to describe it. And then I'm also pressing down on the template and guiding the whole thing through the machine. And notice that I'm stitching relatively slowly. I have found that it's sometimes easy to stitch big stitches during this technique simply because it, it feels really easy. You know, you're, you've kind of got this extra grippy thing with the template and it makes it feel easier. I oftentimes say ruler foot quilting is almost a blend of walking foot quilting and free motion quilting because you have the control of your walking foot, it almost feels like, uh, and, and the straight line created by the ruler, but you're still quilting in free motion. And that's the cool thing. Uh, I could stop right here and just go straight into another design. I could, I could start stitching stippling or something like that because technically this is a form of free motion quilting. Now, I don't have to change directions as much as I am and I need to try not to. This is just a habit. Uh, I needed to stitch just a little bit more down that line and so I reposition my ruler like that and now I'm gonna try and quilt these two angles without rotating the quilt around just to show you what you can do. I think this is so cool. So here I'm repositioning the ruler, not the quilt. I'm lining that up with the edge of those blue petals. And then I'm making sure that the edge of that ruler foot stays in line with the template, that it doesn't shift off or wiggle over. The only time I've ever made a mistake with ruler foot quilting was when the um, foot, I just kind of wandered away from the ruler. <laughs> You know, I just kind of quilted off in another direction from it. So you can see just how easy this is and it's giving us a perfect spacing of a quarter inch away from our Dresden plate because the ruler foot itself is, a, is half of an inch across and with the needle directly in the down position in the middle, well then we are exactly a quarter of an inch from that edge. So simple math allows us to create very beautiful quilting. So from here, I'm actually gonna move out and do the exact same thing along this border line between the border and the quilt block. I'm gonna line up my ruler here with that seam line and I'm gonna stitch a quarter of an inch to the inside of the block. So I'll meet you back here once we finish both lines of quilting, then we'll start knocking out the uh, more lines in this background area. So the next step is to fill in the background area with these rows of straight line echoes. And you can see I've spaced these out at half of an inch and quarter inch intervals. The cool thing is you can do this completely with rulers without any marking at all. Or I should say a little bit of marking can help us space this out and get started on the right track. So I'm just gonna mark a little dot. What I'm doing here is I'm lining up this line that's a half of an inch away from the edge of the template and I'm lining that up on my quilt and I'm gonna mark a little dot right there. And basically what that's gonna guide me is how far down I need to stitch 
and get my needle so that way I can start my half inch echo. So I'm gonna line my ruler up back on this side and that's gonna help me travel stitch. And carefully stitch on down to that mark. And don't worry if you overshoot, you can always just back stitch and you know, travel stitch back, it's fine. So now I'm lining my ruler up and this spacing, I'm with my needle down, I'm in the perfect location to be stitching a half of an inch away. I'm gonna line up my ruler with the second mark on the ruler that's a quarter inch from the edge because a quarter inch on the ruler plus a quarter inch in the foot means that I'm stitching a half of an inch away. If you're not following or that seems really confusing, don't worry. As you get used to ruler foot quilting, as you get uh, more uh, just kind of in tune with the math of it and how everything is spaced out, it'll really start to make sense. Here I quilted down and then just move my ruler and then now I'm quilting the opposite direction and now I'm gonna swing back for an echo. I'm gonna turn my ruler and put it on this side and I'm gonna travel stitch back about a quarter of an inch. A good visual for this is I'm travel stitching back until the line of stitching lines up with that edge of my ruler foot. There we go. Because if that edge is a quarter inch away, then I know my stitching is gonna be a quarter inch away. Now I've moved the ruler back over to the side and I'm lining up just the outer edge of the ruler with that line of stitching that I just quilted. And now I'm gonna quilt back. And I'm gonna quilt back until the back of my ruler foot hits my stitching. And then again, I will move the ruler and quilt on down. Again, if this is in any way confusing, I have to say it makes a lot more sense once you actually get on the real quilt. Uh, I was sitting there, you know, just kind of thinking about it and kind of overthinking it a little bit. But when I actually got on the real quilt and started playing with it, it was super, super easy. So here's another situation where I want a half inch spacing and that might be a little tricky to visualize. So here I'm gonna line my ruler up and I'm just going to make a little mark here so that way I know roughly where to stop stitching. So it's gonna be somewhere around there. I'll get my needle to that position and then I can start that new line of quilting. So here I'll line back up. The reason why I'm lining back up to do this travel stitching is it's just helping me stay right on that line. It's helping me maintain control. So now I'm rotating back over and I'm lining up that mark on the ruler that's a quarter inch from the edge. And I'm lining that up with this line of stitching that's already on the quilt. So I find that I'm actually a little bit off of the template, so I'm gonna take a stitch back. And so now my ruler foot is pressed up against the edge of the template, and now I can stitch on down. And I know that I'm gonna be quilting a perfect half inch spaced line. And now I just kind of eyeballed that <laughs> stitching down. Uh, as I move my ruler, I can see if I've all overshot or undershot, I've undershot ever so slightly. So I take a few stitches to get to that point and then I can quilt that opposite direction. And here I need to quilt back along this line a quarter inch. Remember, it's gonna be a series of half and then quarter inch echoes. And the cool thing is you can absolutely quilt backwards if your machine likes it. My machine is handling backwards quilting A-OK -okay lately, so I can line this up and I can just quilt straight back. And in this case, I'm lining up the edge of the ruler foot with the edge of the previous line of quilting, and that's gonna give me that quarter inch spacing. So I'm gonna continue working this way. I'm gonna space out my next line a half of an inch away, and then the one after that a quarter of an inch away. Continue filling in this space completely with these rows and rows of ruler foot quilting. The last thing to quilt for this block is our echo shell border, or someone in the Facebook group, Jen, commented and said that they look like little rainbows to her, so we can call them that too. We'll just call them little rainbows from now on. So basically you stitch an arch shape, and then you're gonna travel stitch inside, and quilt another little arch shape. And it's just careful travel stitching right in the ditch. Now notice, I'm doing this with my ruler foot. I didn't change feet, mostly because I just forgot. <laughs> so it's very clear, I hope that it's clear for you to see that a darning foot is just a type. Uh, a ruler foot is a type of darning foot. 
And so the, everything that you do with your ruler foot, you can do uh, free motion quilting with. So uh, I can quilt this design, I can quilt in all directions. I can then put a template next to it and go into ruler foot quilting. Uh, you can do all of that. So I think it's a really neat foot to have and it's a really cool skill to build. Certainly something I wanna play with more this year. So now the corner of the border design is a circle and then we're gonna go inside with a spiral. And this is the one thing that can be a little tricky with your ruler foot attached and that is travel stitching because obviously the high edge around the foot kind of blocks your vision a little bit. So just go slow and be careful. And as far as my body positioning at the machine, I've got my chair set up a little high so that way I'm looking basically kind of straight down into the foot so I can really see my stitching right in the center. Uh, and while it's not an open toe, obviously, I'm still able to see my stitching well enough that I can do that travel stitching. So let me show you one more echo shell here in the border. I'm just curling the block up into the arm of the machine so that way it's out of my way. And I'm making sure that none of this edge has flipped over. It's so easy to stitch the back of your quilt to itself. So always kind of check in and make sure that's not happening. So now I'm gonna swing out and around, just carefully trying to stay right on that line. Now I'm gonna reach that ditch and travel stitch over and then swing inside for my first little rainbow echo. Again, just maintaining, it's kind of a, a smooth motion. It's a half circle shape, so try not to wobble and try and do that all in one pass. That usually can sometimes help if you just make it one fluid movement all the way across. And do that again for another echo. And our fourth echo. So you're just gonna continue travel stitching down this line, hitting each echo shell or little rainbow shape, quilting all of them and then filling in the corners with these circle spirals and your block will be complete. So that's it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed learning how to quilt this Dresden plate with me today. If you'd like to find the pattern, you can check it out at leahday.com slash block party. If you have any questions, please post them to the comments below. I'm here to help you learn more about quilting. And if you enjoy this video, please subscribe to my channel on YouTube and share it with your friends. That really helps me out a lot. Until next time, let's go quilt.